Good evening, hello and welcome. You're with Elections Unlocked, the show that right through this election season has brought you all the news, updates, what's been going on in the battleground of politics. Let's tell you the headlines on Elections Unlocked. Politics peaks over Parliament breach of security. Congress now demands a statement from Home Minister Amit Shah. Trinamool Congress calls for BJP MP Pratap Sinha's expulsion. He was the MP who issued the passes to the intruders. The BJP social media head Amit Malviya in a social media post points a finger at the Congress, identifies one of the accused in Parliament security breach as Neelam Azad claims she's an active Congress supporter and a professional activist. Mohan Yadav and Vishnu Dev Sai officially take charge as Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh Chief Ministers. Prime Minister Modi leads a BJP show of strength in the Hindi heartland. But the top story on elections unlocked, it's been our top story through the day. The new parliament security being breached today on the day of the 23rd anniversary of the tragic 2001 parliament attack. All the four intruders, two of whom entered the Lok Sabha, have been detained while an investigation is on. A political war of words has broken out on a day that the BJP officially announced that it was ready for battleground 2024. This incident is certainly going to be one of the issues that will play out in terms of the opposition questioning the government on its commitment to security of its own MPs. Take a look. India's new parliament intruded by two men. The country's biggest security breach on the anniversary of the 2001 parliament attack. This issue of national security has predictably been hijacked by political point scoring. The India Alliance party staged a walkout in Rajya Sabha. The Congress is now demanding a statement from Home Minister Amit Shah. कई दिनों से ये चर्चा में आई कि कोई आतंकवादी संगठन सदन में हमला करेगी और वो भी तेरा दिसंबर को ये जानकारी भी सरकार के पास थे और सबको जानकारी में ये रही क्योंकि मीडिया वालों ने बार-बार ये सारे मुद्दा उठाए थे फिर भी इस तरीके की चूक क्यों हुई ये सबका सवाल है Congress party workers protested outside the residence of BJP MP Pratap Simha's residence in Mysuru. One of the intruders, Sagar Sharma, was carrying a visitor pass issued by the BJP MP. वहाँ वो गए नहीं, उन्होंने बाकायदे बम फेंका, धुआं उड़ाया, पाउडर फेंका, जिससे भी धुआं निकला। तो सबसे बड़ा सवाल तो ये है कि राष्ट्रीय सुरक्षा से जुड़ा हुआ मुद्दा है। वहाँ पर इस सरकार अगर संसद की हिफाजत नहीं कर सकती, तो इस संसार इस सरकार से देश की हिफाजत की उम्मीद क्या करें? हमें तो ऐसा लग रहा था कि आज जैसे पुलवामा का रिहर्सल कर रहे थे। The TMC has called the Lok Sabha security breach an insider job, accusing the BJP of facilitating the attack. The party is also demanding the expulsion of MP Pratap Simha. Our straight question is that you have expelled Mahua Moitra, national security compromised. What is Lok Sabha going to do because national security has been compromised? Today there was a, a tremendous lapse because of these two people. So BJP MP who issued the pass has done a very irresponsible job and he needs to be expelled from parliament in the run-up to 2024 expect the parliament security breach to become a raging political issue bureau report india today and to get the very latest on that big story i'm joined by milan sharma who's been tracking all the developments milan we are told that pratap sima the bjp mp uh, who gave these visitors passes to these people who turned out to be intruders has spoken to the Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla. Do we know what happened and do we know who these four individuals are? Hmm. 
Uh, well, Rajdeep, uh, basically what we know from our sources right now is that Pratap Simha has spoken to the Lok Sabha speaker. He has said that uh, the accused father belonged to his constituency and he was the one who was uh, trying to get a pass uh, for these people. So which is why they were in touch with his PA. And that's how uh, the intruders, uh, one of the accused, got the pass to enter the parliament. Now, that being said, that is a statement that has been made by Pratap Simha, who's also been questioned as to how these people were allowed to enter the parliament building. About the background question, Rajdeep, they belong to different backgrounds. Neelam Azad is from Haryana. She claims to be a farmer's daughter. Uh, Amol Shinde is from Maharashtra. Uh, Manuranjan and Sagar. Manuranjan is from Mysuru himself. He's a computer engineer. And Sagar Sharma belongs to Lucknow. Uh, he has studied till the 12th class. So these people, according to police sources, met each other online. And uh, what the police sources have told us is that it was planned and mediated. All four were actually staying at uh, a person's place in Gurugram at the, at the person's residence. So there's a Lalit Jha, as well as uh, uh, Vish Vicky Sharma, who's also part of this conspiracy. The six people are being, uh, you know, uh, understandably four are being questioned right now. I'm at the Parliament Street Police uh, Station and six of them are being looked under the scanner for this entire um, incident that has taken place inside Parliament today. And of course, uh, uh, as we speak, the questioning is going on. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what the government's official response on this is going to be, because, uh, you know, the current scenario in which the questioning is being done, the interrogation reveals that most of these people are saying that uh, they were in Parliament to raise the voices on unemployment, on the Manipur issue, on the farmers issue. And uh, current interrogations have not led to a clear mode by all these people who two of them orchestrated the incidences outside parliament and two of them inside parliament so that is let's where the questioning stands right now let's and leave of it course, there uh, let's leave it there at the moment what you're telling us that there is still much more to be learned about just what will happen next in this big case milan sharma with all those details let's turn then uh, to the formal anointment today of the chief ministers of Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh, both of whom took their oath today in Bhopal and Raipur, while the Prime Minister and Home Minister Amit Shah and BJP President J.P. Nadda watched on. Remember, this has been a complete change of guard in these two states. Shivrat Singh Chauhan giving way to Mohan Yadav, and you've got uh, Bhajan Lal Sharma taking over a post that Vasundha Raja at one time might have thought was hers. Take a look at today's other big story, the change of guard in two states, certainly, Chhattisgarh and in Madhya Pradesh. The new guard of BGP was all set to take on the mantle, but the people were standing in the way. The former chief minister of Madhya Pradesh, Shivraj Singh Chauhan, had to accept the adulation of the crowd cheering for him. And he left them with a wave as the new chief minister of Madhya Pradesh, Mohan Yadav, took his oath to office. I, Dr. Mohan Yadav, I take the advice of the Swarkis, that I, with the Dwarah, I will keep the truth of the Samhidhan, the truth of the Samhidhan, and the truth of the Samhidhan. After the massive win in three states that secured complete domination over Hindi heartland for BJP, the Saffron Party decided to balance the caste equations while picking its chief ministers for Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan. It also meant new faces were behind introduced at the cost of the old trusted hands that have won them many battles in the past. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Union Home Minister Amit Shah, along with Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath, were present at both Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh swearing-in ceremonies. But the Union Home Minister and the Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister maintained distance from each other, not even exchanging a greeting. But the swearing-in ceremony of Chhattisgarh Chief Minister Vishnu Deosai continued without a glitch. I, Vishnu Deosai, I take the advice of this कि जो विषय छत्तीसगढ़ राज्य के मुख्यमंत्री के रूप में बोथ द चीफ मिनिस्टर्स हैव डेप्यूटीज टू सपोर्ट देम टू रियलाइज द पोल प्रॉमिसेस मेड बाय बीजेपी एंड इंश्योर द डोमिनेंस ऑफ द पार्टी इन द कमिंग पार्लियामेंट इलेक्शंस
And joining me now, Himendar Sharma joins me from Bhopal. Dev Ankur joins me from Jaipur. Uh, first to you, uh, uh, Himendar, S- relatively smooth transition. There was a fear that maybe uh, Shivraj Singh Chauhan supporters would, uh, would stay away from the swearing in. But clearly, the BJP has reconciled itself that they've got a new leader. What are the priorities Mohan Yadav has? We are told he's already said no more loudspeakers at specific times. Uh, clearly, he means business in a particular way. Well, yes, uh, he has taken over. The transition was smooth. Uh, But before that, uh, Shivra Singh Chauhan did make some noise. Uh, Yesterday, he addressed a press conference and uh, uh, to a question which he probably was expecting. He said that he would rather prefer to die than go to Delhi and ask something for himself. And today also, when he was on stage, there was the biggest roar for him and he was almost mobbed when he was on his way out uh, from the venue where this swearing-in ceremony happened. But that is it. And after that, the transition has happened. The chief minister, new chief minister Mohan Yadav, he went to Mahakaleshwar Ujjain to seek the blessings of Lord Mahakal and thereafter came back to Bhopal. And the first order that he signed was that the, uh, all religious places, there would be a ban on loudspeakers and uh, DJs beyond a certain decibel level, which has already been uh, ordered by the Supreme Court and the des- permissible decibel limits have been defined. After that, he also announced that there are going to be 52 districts in Madhya Pradesh would, uh, would have uh, Prime Minister Excellence Colleges, which would have all, he named all the facilities that would be there in these colleges. These are the two major decisions that he right. took today. But overall, a smooth transition, yes, because, uh, the, because of the nature of the Bharatiya Janata Party. Okay. Devan Gurwadwan, smooth transition in Madhya Pradesh. What about Rajasthan? Vasundha Raje, is there any sign that she has taken this, uh, that she has no options left now? and that she will have to gradually perhaps accept the inevitable and maybe some say uh, just fade out from politics. Does she plan? What role is she planning for herself? Well, Rajdeep, there are several uh, theories that are doing the rounds. One is that probably and maybe some assurance has been given to her that, uh, you know, uh, her uh, son uh, uh, Dushan Singh's political future lies ahead of him and uh, he will be, uh, you know, uh, given a certain post in the future, probably in Modi 3.0 if the BJP does get uh, chosen again in 2024. Uh, Having said that, you know, uh, it's hard or maybe difficult or maybe impossible to see Vasundra Raje working uh, as just a, a member of legislative assembly or even in the in the cabinet of another person in this case Bajan Lal Sharma as simply a minister uh, having said that also the posts of governor and speaker uh, as per sources have been offered to her but she has declined them so uh, maybe you know uh, as far as I know her, she may prefer to take a uh, temporary sabbatical from active political life and uh, perhaps visit London, right. uh, so to say. Uh, that has been her favorite destination or maybe some other destination that she may want to visit. But as I said, it's really difficult whether you know she will fade into oblivion like maybe uh, uh, Uma Bharti. Time will tell us, but Rajdeep, uh, really tough. Maybe she, the way she uh, she had to grin and bear it uh, once the name of uh, Bhajan Lal had to be uh, was proposed by her uh, when Rajnath Singh had given her that slip and she read that name and the expression on her face was not lost on anyone. She also had to accompany him to the governor house and as per sources, she was clearly told that she will have to not just be the proposer but also accompany uh, Bhajan Lal Sharma and Rajnath Singh, the central observer, to the governor house when the they claim is giving us those details for for giving us those details i appreciate you joining us let's turn from there uh, to bhajan lal sharma himself jo jita wo sikandar he's the new chief minister some would say a surprise choice others would say he's been around for a very long time he may be a first time mla but has been completely ingrained in the sang parivar culture he will take remember an oath formally on the 15th of december so he's chief minister designate Divya Kumari or Diya Kumari and Prem Chand Bhairwa will be his deputies. The BJP believes it's found the perfect caste combination for, they believe, Rajasthan's dominance. Here's a report explaining who's Rajasthan's new king. It's a dream debut for Bhajan Lal Sharma. The first time MLA from Sanganer constituency will be the new Rajasthan chief minister.
The decision was announced at a meeting of BJP MLAs supervised by party's central observers led by Rajnath Singh and in the presence of former CM Vasundhra Rajay Sindhya. Sharma, who originally hails from Bharatpur, was fielded from the BJP bastion of Sanganer by dropping a sitting MLA. The 56-year-old Brahmin leader has served as the party's state unit general secretary in the past. हमारे देश के ये सोशल प्रधानमंत्री सम्मानीय नरेंद्र मोदी जी को धन्यवाद देना चाहता हूं मैं हमारी पार्टी के राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष सम्मानीय जेपी नड्डा जी को धन्यवाद देना चाहता हूं सम्मानीय हमारे गृह मंत्री अमित शाह जी को धन्यवाद देना चाहता हूं नरेंद्र मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में हम राजस्थान का पूरी तरह से सर्वांगीण विकास किसी भी क्षेत्र में हो निश्चित रूप से हम Jaipur royal family member Dia Kumari and MLA from Dudu seat, Premchand Bairwa will be deputy CMs. सबका धन्यवाद दूंगी कि आपने मुझे ये जिम्मेदारी सौंपी है और बिल्कुल पूरा प्रयास रहेगा कि मैं अपनी तरफ से सब कुछ करूंगी काम करेंगे अभी भी किया ही है और बहुत मुझे लगता है कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी पे जो जिस तरह से जनता ने विश्वास जताया है और माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी के अब दिशा निर्देश में उनके मार्गदर्शन में हम लोग भी काम करेंगे भारतीय जनता पार्टी में कार्यकर्ताओं को सम्मान जो मिलता है मेरे जैसा आदमी अध्यापक का लड़का विधायक बन सकता है दूसरी बारी भारतीय जनता पार्टी में संभव है ये भारतीय जनता पार्टी में हो सकता है कि भजन जी जैसा संगठन का एक छोटा सा कार्यकर्ता आज मुख्यमंत्री भजन लाल शर्मा's anointment as CM sparked celebrations in his family. कैसा लग रहा है उम्मीद थी? बहुत 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 बढ़िया बहुत बढ़िया भाई उम्मीद उम्मीद थी आपको? उम्मीद देखो हम सब का चुना है भाई भैया भगवान की मर्जी है सब ईश्वर की मर्जी आप लोग ही मेहरबानी है संघर्ष किया भजन लाल ने आपके बहुत बहुत करो By appointing a Brahmin as CM, a Rajput and scheduled caste leader as deputy CMs. The BJP has attempted a unique social engineering. Brahmins constitute only 7% of population, Rajputs 9% and SCs 18%. The BJP's choice of three fresh faces as CMs for Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh can be called a generational shift even if not in terms of age. The change of guard marks the exit of heavyweights Vasundhra Raje, Shivraj Singh Chauhan and Raman Singh all of whom were given reins during the Vajpayee Advani era the bjp has begun a new innings in the hindi hockey bureau report india today okay let me leave you tonight though with images that perhaps uh, will strike a chord with a number of you who were around 22 years ago this very day when the indian parliament was attacked that was that terrifying moment that took place when pakistan based terrorists attacked the indian parliament remember a number of people died protecting the citadel of indian democracy well today all these years later we saw a very different kind of parliament security breach this time by people who claimed to be uh, visitors of an mp turned out to be intruders were carrying in canisters into the lok sabha fortunately no lives lost this time and all those have been detained the fact though is it's a grim reminder that security can never be taken for granted thanks for watching stay well stay safe jai hind namaskar